Good morning, folks. This is footage of a meteor that streaked across the skies of central Mexico in the early hours of Saturday morning. Loud booms were reported. Real slow mover there. Folks, before we begin, if you haven't jumped over to earthchanges.org and checked out the videos there, it is very much worth it. Without first telling me, two professors in the eastern U.S. did some math on some of the correlations implied in the video, The Sun and Storms. It's the last one in the first column over at Earth Changes. And their quote is, It is unthinkable that this relationship could have stealthily endured below the radar for the entirety of scientific history. Yeah, no kidding. They can publish if they want, and I'm sure all observers wish them well and success in doing so, but as for the rest of us, we've got little time for matters outside of keeping our eyes open and firmly planted where they need to be. Keep it up, my friends. The world is watching you. Anyway, we're doing a good bit of yapping here before getting to it. Got the usual plus Dr. August Dunning with the Mars weather report at the end, so stick around. But first, let's get to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star looking very quiet. Main noticeable features are dark incoming, filaments and coronal holes. Let's first come to the flaring. That's what our star can muster against the Earth facing quiet. The lone large sunspot group tried to raise an army by his side yesterday, but after one sea flare, his luck was over. Solar wind showing a peak of the particle speed in the coronal hole stream, but with low density and benign magnetism, the stream is not causing any magnetic instability. Large northern coronal hole turns right and the next set swings in from the left. Certainly not of the same size, but those are southern fields, so they are strong. Something that expert solar watchers will notice, both the main bulges of the northern and southern fields can be seen mostly covering about half to 60% of the disk. Let me flatten out the whole solar sphere into a rectangle so we can see what's happening. The big openings are bunched as a more standard coronal structure returns to bring four heliospheric sectors here. We've been operating outside of the norm for more than a year now. Bit of perspective. Anyway, we've got an Earth spot electric event to discuss. Storm in the Indian Ocean now waning, but that means if the solar energy caused the cyclone, the ground should start shaking nearby soon. Well, how about a tremendous eruption at Sinabung just south in Sumatra? There are confirmed casualties from this event, directly south of the dissipation zone of the storm. We also saw the largest quakes of the last day strike this general part of the world. However, they were not the most interesting. That title goes north of Severnaya to a North Pole quake. Folks, the bad weather should be returning to the United States tonight. It's going to be flood threats at the northwest side of that system, but severe threats up and down the central convergence you see there. Across the pond, there is one system at the western coastlines driving moisture on shore, and you'll see another one coming in right behind it. There are a couple systems affecting Australia and New Zealand. These may move a bit faster, actually, so you folks are on local forecast watch. And last but not least, boy, that's a fun-looking storm staring down Chile, isn't it? It has almost stopped in its tracks, and that western system's kind of catching up to them. Folks, we had our podcast post yesterday for members at suspiciousobservers.org. If you haven't checked out earthchanges.org, please do so. You can also get the electronic copy of our book for only $5 at the link on that page. As promised, here's Dr. August Dunning with the Mars Weather Report. It's 4 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. It's time for Mars Weekly Weather Review. Looking on spaceweathernews.com, we covered the Enlil spiral last week. It's clear that several solar storm pressure waves were combining with a coronal hole stream beginning on the 12th, peaking on the 14th, and waning on the 15th of May. The Enlil at Mars report from the Integrated Space Weather Analysis site shows the atmospheric changes were the result of an unusual combination of peak density of 6 particles per cubic centimeter and peak temperature of 24,000 degrees Kelvin but a reduced velocity causing a condition where cloud cover was reduced significantly as the reduction in solar wind velocity, low of 340 kilometers per second, supported more lingering interaction during the high-energy ultraviolet radiation from the sun, expanding the Martian atmosphere, and the Martian ionic field magnetic pressure lifting gas into the exosphere and induced electromagnetic field bow shock on the 12th and 13th, only to be blown off into space on the 13th through the 15th. This caused continued widespread dust activity on Mars this past week. The arcade-shaped polar dust storm mentioned in the previous week propagated eastward to Utopia, far north of the Curiosity, before subsiding into a diffuse dust cloud. 
Meanwhile, in the southern hemisphere, in Valmarineris, local scale dust storms and water vapor lifted into the exosphere by the crustal magnetic field regions caused condensate water ice clouds that were spotted in many regions along the seasonal south polar ice cap edge. The lower latitudes also experienced some dust storms as dust activity in the Hellas pushed northward into Tyrena. The floors of Valmarineris were obscured by dust due to lifting near northern Aonia, Salus, in the equatorial regions, where graphic water ice clouds were spotted over Sirtis Major that were reduced during the solar storm impacts, as, as were the storm cover over Elysium and the large stars to shield volcanoes. The rover's opportunity in Endeavor Crater and Curiosity and Gale Crater experienced storm free skies throughout the week. Global temperatures in the mid latitudes will be in the middle 40s during the day and minus 105 at night and minus 120 at the South Pole. Mars is an analog for the way solar wind will react with our atmosphere as the magnetic field reduces in strength over the next 50 years. Enjoy this interglacial while you can. It won't last. Better buy an Arctic parka.